I don't know if, how many of your pe people here are feeling a little burnt out? Okay, do you feel, okay, I am, I feel crispy burnt. And I did used to do a lot of complaining to my partners. And what happened was, is I had a lot of issues that I felt were really significant and I wanted to tell and complain to the world. And eventually I figured out how. So this is using social media to grow your practice. And I want you to think about how you can use social media to do just about everything you wanted to do, which is collaborate with the world, uh, grow your practice, talk to people you've never met, get the advice from world-class uh, people that you would be scared to walk up to. You can do it all with social media. And how do I click and go next? There we go. I've got nothing to disclose except for one thing, that when everybody was selling Twitter stock, I was buying it. And that's because you can communicate. I do general surgery as well. I do trauma surgery, but my main focus is bariatric surgery. And bariatric surgery is just a little bit different because it's a unique disease. And there's a lot of stigma. There's a lot of discrimination with it. We have a successful uh, treatment for it, but not everybody knows about it. Everybody knows what's to be done about a hernia, and they believe that they need a hernia repair. It's a little bit different with bariatric surgery. And we're constantly fighting this. We're fighting fake news. We're fighting the media. And we're fighting misguided people uh, about what they're seeing. And especially they see that with bariatric surgery. We have evidence. And at meetings like this, we present papers. We write papers. We do stuff. Oh, my God, you spend so much time on it. But if nobody's seeing it, that's a real problem. You've got to make sure that your papers make an impact. You've got to make sure that that all the great research that's going on is heard. And unfortunately, some people get it wrong. And this can apply to a hernia repair or a gallbladder or reflux surgery or colon surgery. People have a perception of things. They perceive that if you exercise and you eat right, you're going to be thin, and that if you eat the wrong things and sit around, you're going to be heavy. That's a medical misinformation based on preconceived ideas and opinions. It's not based on medical fact. This is the fact that obesity is a disease of genetics, environment, development, and behavior. And there are many contributors to energy storage that maybe not all of you even know about. And if you delve further into the evidence and read, you'll know that. And in fact, patients just can't go on a diet and lose weight. It's pretty much impossible. If your BMI is 40 to 45, you get about a 1,290 to 1 chance of losing that weight and getting down. Uh, so really, what you really need is bariatric surgery. And most of the people who are eligible for it, well, only about 1% of those people uh, really consider the treatment that will treat them. They'll go for their hernia repair. They'll go for their colon resection for their cancer. But for some reason, there's a stigma with this. And uh, really, the people who are eligible, only about 35% will really go for it. So when you look about growing your practice and increasing uh, the volume, at least with bariatric surgery, you can compete with those individuals next door, or you can educate the public as to why maybe they should have bariatric surgery, or maybe reflux surgery, or another ventral hernia repair, or whatever you may do. And really, you can be competitive or you can be collaborative. And I found that collaborative is the way to go. Now, when you do social media and you can pay someone to do it, because you know what, frankly, none of you have time to do it, right? You don't walk down a hall. You don't have time in between cases. You don't have time at night or in the morning when you wake up. It's important that you are the center of this, that you don't just lie it on the practice. I did a little experiment, and I always show this slide in my talks, and I set up three Twitter sites to see what would happen. Well, one was the practice. That's Fairfield County Bariatrics and Surgical Specialist, PC, kind of long to say. And then I set one up with my two buddies who are football players, and then I just did myself, regular old me. And surprisingly, what took off was the site which was me. And uh, the reason for that is people want to hear from you. They want to hear from the doctor. And if they have access to you, you know, they can call you up on the phone after hours and not get your service and get you. But if they can get you any time on social media and get your opinion or your thoughts, um, that's, that's wonderful. you got to be careful about giving your opinion. I didn't misspoke. 
Um, so social media to promote your surgical practice. Well, there's marketing of the actual uh, disease process and the treatment, and then there's mar marketing of the actual business. And you can do that on your sites. And um, when you think academically, you want interesting articles and information, but when you're thinking about the patient and what the patient wants to see, well, they want to lose weight. They want to go from very heavy to very thin. And you want to present that in a way that's appealing to them. You want to show sympathy and emotion and maybe a little bit of comedy, too. doesn't hurt. So when we look at the different types of social media, think about drinking a cup of coffee and think about the different types of social media. Well, hey... If you're drinking coffee and you got a lot of caffeine, you're moving pretty quick, you want to dance around, that's the happening now, that's Twitter. And if you want to tell your friends about it, well, that's Facebook. And if you want to show a picture of you looking lovely drinking your coffee, well, that's Instagram. And if you want to show wacky, crazy ways to drink crazy kind of coffee, that's Snapchat. I don't do that. That's for my kids. If you want to be very professional then LinkedIn, you can explain coffee and the different types of coffee. And if you want to give a lecture, that's SlideShare. You can show the whole lecture. Maybe you really want to be a YouTuber and do a whole TV show on coffee. So if you want to keep it simple and you don't have that much time and you want to be professional, you're, there's a way of putting your CV out there with a whole, a whole lot more, and that's LinkedIn. And that's really where you want to start. You can collaborate with other professionals. Patients really don't go on there. You can't really do a tremendous amount with it, but that's LinkedIn. Facebook practice page is something you've got to have. You've got to do that. That's really like your second website, and it's a freebie. You can do things from recipes, uh, blogs, et cetera, et cetera. Facebook is great. We all know Facebook. The patients know closed Facebook groups. That's where they go to talk about you. And there are thousands of them. There are thousands of them with, with nearly 100,000 of members. And they are talking about you whether you realize it or not. Patients find me, and I have no idea how they do it, but they're talking about you. This is Moms in Weston, and a patient showed me this, and I was kind of shocked the first time I saw it. But they're talking about you. Now, what if you've got difficult cases? You can go on the active member groups of the ASMBS uh, or uh, SAGES, or you can go talk about cases uh, on the journal club groups as well. So there's a way to get information and talk about difficult cases. But really, where are those patients on social media? Uh, the open site really is Instagram. And there are a lot of patients talking about uh, different issues about bariatric surgery there. Uh, on Twitter, you know, you can have three hashtags, and that's really kind of a big deal. You shouldn't go over that. There are more hashtags on Instagram. Everything is a hashtag. So you can go crazy on hashtags and reach a tremendous amount of patients. And really, this is a golden opportunity. What, no matter what you do, whether it's obesity, bariatric surgery, or hernias, or reflux surgery, a uh, tremendous amount. Just to mention a little bit about YouTube, this is what you used to do to see a good case, what's going on, nudge your way in, stand on a couple of blocks, look over some shoulders to see what's going on. We could go look at cases all day long on YouTube. We never have to step in an OR. We can really learn. It's changed the way that we've learned. Um, so... Uh, also on YouTube are great educational videos. When it comes to bariatric surgery, we've developed these uh, whiteboard talks, first by Tim Morey, and then Stacy Brethauer developed them for the ASMBS. We know that uh, Twitter has really taken off, and I'm a real Twitter fan, as you may know. Um, uh, Twitter has really uh, come a long way in, in you know, a little over a decade. There's a tremendous amount to learn. This is where you can really collaborate and link up with the other doctors and ask their opinions and then direct message them. I really think that that is a good start. Uh, the Ultimate Tweet has a great picture. It's got a great educational article hooked on to it. You want to call out individuals. That's a little A. You call someone out so they actually see what you're doing. And then you put hashtags that help you to categorize things. So uh, that's the anatomy of, of a tweet. Now, no one's going to see your tweet unless you're networked, unless people follow you. And people say followers are not important. And actually, Twitter now doesn't want you to follow too many people. They want to control. They want you to advertise. 
But really, the power of a network is how many people that are on it and are listening to you and what you're saying. And we actually have gotten that down to a science. Uh, this is a study done, and it looked at scientists that, that follow each other. And really, in order for you to really make an impact, a uh, global impact, you need, need to get to about 2,200 followers. And that's really uh, where the decision makers will come in. And those are the small amount of decision makers that are going to listen and send your message out uh, to the rest of the world. I work for uh, the SOAR Journal as well. I'm in private practice. I am in uh, group practice. And, uh, but I do a lot of academic stuff because it helps me. It helps to get my name out there. I do all this tweeting for SOAR, putting all the articles uh, in. And I'll tell you that pictures are important. Pictures will help your tweets uh, grow 37%, but we want our tweets uh, to be even better. And if you have an article, you want to have a visual abstract of it because these will increase the impressions sevenfold, your retweets eightfold, and if you're going to spend time writing an article, I don't know how many academic surgeons are here, it's going to increase it about three, time, uh, three times the amount. At SWORD, we make visual abstracts. Uh, this is also great for marketing, for your practice. If you really can be creative in presenting information in a way that people can see it in a nutshell, is really uh, very, very helpful. So uh, Twitter chats are also a great way to reach out to patients. We have this Twitter, we developed OBSM, Obesity Social Media. We do twit tweet chats uh, about uh, once a month. We develop a blog, and then uh, we have a Twitter chat. It's the second Sunday uh, at 9 o'clock of every month. And Obesity Social Media now has a version in the UK, in the Middle East, and Mexico. So this is really a great way for, to, get, uh, to get the message out. You talk about a, a topic, you create a blog, five questions. Uh, the inner circle does this, and then we start tweeting, and people come aboard. They want to listen. They want to chime in. And what really makes the impact is the days later when these tweets are retweeted to other people with all that great information and opinions about a topic. So... Tweet chats are great. At this meeting, I encourage anybody taking pictures uh, and send them out. Communicating good information at a meeting uh, is really, really powerful because I get a lot of information at meetings uh, from people who are live tweeting. So I encourage you to do it. It's really kind of taken off. It has plateaued in some areas, but it really is a great activity. And what gets the message out the best? And, and these are really good studies now showing that the accelerators of the information are actually the patients. You need to involve patients, and I think involving patients in all aspects of these meetings and in your practice and in your social media sites is a great way to spread that information. The uh, video is also very important. You can do video anytime. I can go and video and interview Dr. Dr. Rachel Moore right after this and send it out. And people want to see video, and, and they learn a lot from it. And it really is a wonderful way. You can do it on Periscope, which is Twitter, uh, or you can do it on Facebook Live. Also, being funny, and it's hard to be funny. It's not easy. I've fallen flat many times, but you can also make fun of yourself, which works very well. Uh, and people want to be emotionally driven, whether it's an incredible result with a patient, whether it's something that's shocking, whether it's something that's really funny. That's how it can have the greatest impact on social media. And, you know, well, I'll give it a try. They cemented closed the door to my recovery room, okay? And that's what I did. I walked into a wall. I did kind of plan that. I thought it was funny, but I guess I fell flat today. But that's okay. That's okay. You got to try. Uh, so traditional media controls access to the public. And we don't have access to that, do we? Well, this guy found out that we do. We actually do have access. Through Twitter, he was able to completely bypass TV, radio, and the newspaper, and you all know it. And it was, whether you agree with it or not, I don't know, I'm not getting political here, the gentleman was effective in getting his message across. We've also been effective, uh, that's Joseph Sacrin. I won't talk about all these people, but we just, he was able to use social media to actually get this is my lane across uh, with many other individuals. I don't want to go over here, uh, but 
risk, uh, really you gotta be professional on social media just like in your office. Uh, you wanna use your website as the center of all your social media, driving all the impact to that. That's your base camp, that's your golden thing, and Google is king. Remember that, never forget it. Build your influence, your reputation, and your visibility. Know your audience, provide value with your social media. Don't take pictures of everybody, that's really not very interesting. It's interesting to you. And you wanna build relationships and allow others to engage. So I would just take a picture of this slide if you want. If you don't want to do social media, at least do an uh, Instagram, a um, LinkedIn site. And uh, basically, be unique, right, I guess be I memorable, do something thing. stupid that everybody's going to remember. I don't think that that think guy looks, looks like, like me. me. You think it looks but like I me? I don't know. It was a good try. Thank you very much.